Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Laura Vialli, and we are back to talk about um, stress relief with Laura Sullivan, my friend and colleague. Hi, Laura. <laughs> good morning. Hi. Good morning. So, so yeah, Laura and I have uh, done a mini series of videos and conversations about different ways to reduce stress. And the reason we're doing that is number one, because of the time that we're in and coronavirus and um, being in quarantine and this stress, I don't know about you guys, but for me, probably one of the more stressful pieces of this very big thing that's happening in the world right now is just uncertainty. Nobody knows how to plan their summer. Um, there's just so many questions in the air. And I think those of us who are planners and like to, you know, know what to expect, this is very disorienting. So we wanted to do a series that is chock full of valuable, actionable tips that you guys can take to uh, feel less stress, which just supports your body. Um, and again, when we are less stressed, our body performs better, and our immune system performs better, our digestion performs better, and we just feel better. So, um, and we're more equipped to handle, um, you know, God forbid if we get sick or something like that. So, uh, that's sort of an overview of what we're doing today, and uh, or what we're what we've been doing in the series. And today we want to focus on grounding. That is really important. And so I want to start by handing it over to Laura. And for those, so for those of us who aren't familiar with the term grounding or being grounded and that sort of a thing, what, what would you say, Laura? How do you describe grounding or being grounded? Yeah, I like to, sometimes I like to think of things in I, the pictures actually in my mind. And so when I think of the opposite of being grounded, when I think of being ungrounded and nervous and overwhelmed and anxious, I think about the energy of that being here, right? All of our, all of this self-talk is all going on up here. I think about being up in the clouds. And so the words that come to my mind for that would be, you know, moving and um, not stable and light and airy you know, so when I think of all those words and that energy, it just doesn't feel, it just feels really like I'm a kite flying, kind of, Yeah. you know, and to me, that's how I feel when I feel nervous or overwhelmed or anxious, right? But when I think of grounding, I think, the, I love to think of it as like a tree, right? Think about mm -hmm. a tree with its roots grounded into earth. The tree, the, the qualities of that are like stable, heavy, trusting, um, you know, sort of this heavy, solid feeling with a, a solid trunk, but also sort of flexible. It can be flexible, right? With its trees kind of blowing in the wind. And so that's kind of what I think of when I think of grounding. And when I feel safe and um, happy and solid, that's what I feel grounded. So those, yeah. that's kind of what I think of when I think of being grounded. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, just yeah, just a, a nice feeling of of even just calm, right? Mm -hmm. Which does yeah. feel yes, um, yeah, and which feels safe and feels like okay, I can trust in the moment, and uh, and that's hard when we're feeling so uncertain and and safe. So there are things that we can do to encourage that sense of being grounded and grounding, which just calms us down, it calms the stress response, and it um, makes us feel uh, a lot less stress and, and a, lot less, a lot better in our bodies. Yep. Yeah. So Laura and I came up with a few things. There's many things you can do, but we wanted to mm -hmm. give you three things that you can do uh, to be grounded. And so one of them is uh, probably one of my favorites, um, and maybe Laura too, but is being in nature, being outside and being surrounded by trees or the beach or whatever form of nature resonates with you the most. 
can be incredibly grounding. Um, I, I'll tell a quick story when, uh, of when I really utilized this practice of going for walks in nature. For me, it's the woods. There's something about being surrounded by trees. Maybe it has something to do with the analogy that Laura mentioned earlier in the conversation, but for me, just being surrounded by trees makes me feel really good and calm and connected with um, my body, with nature. And it really takes the stress just kind of melts away when I'm in that environment. And so um, a few years ago, I had a friend who um, lost her battle with brain cancer at a really young and um, traumatic and stressful. And I remember during that time, I was really struggling with her death and I, remember feeling, you know, grief, of course, um, but just very stressed, very anxious. Um, it, was, it was really difficult for me to process. And so I was very, at the time, very drawn to going to the woods, taking a walk, and just breathing deeply and just looking around. And, you know, the other thing that's important to to mention here when you're taking your walks in nature is to be really present with it, to really look around you and notice whatever, notice what you notice. And, and rather than kind of walking with your eyes down and your thoughts all swirling around, right? You want to, you want to be present. And one of the ways you can do that is to just, Use your five senses and just really absorb what um, what you're what you're noticing. So, what does the air feel like on your skin? What colors are you noticing? What are the trees doing? Are they blowing or are they still? Do you hear birds? Um, all of that makes you present, and it takes it uh, the stress levels just come down because of being present in the present moment. So uh, I found that to be incredibly, incredibly helpful when I was feeling like my thoughts were running away with me and I couldn't control all the emotions I was feeling. Those walks in the woods were huge. And I know Laura has a story also about how grounding nature can be. Yeah, you know, Nature is, we actually have studies that show that being in nature can reduce cortisol levels, reduce stress levels, um, enhance sleep. You know, um, nature is, and when you think about it too, we think about all of our ancestors a long time ago, and even people in other countries now, if they live really outside kind of in nature, you know what I mean? Um, I used to live in Africa and it occurred to me that like we lived outside basically we had mud huts that we slept in but like the cooking everything gets done outside in nature and here in America I think we spend 93% of our time inside um, yeah. you know and nature is it's rich in prana or our life force nature just has prana so when you're out there you feel all that life force around you you know, also nature has the primordial sounds or like the basic sounds mm -hmm. of nature, the basic sounds of our lives kind of. And so that is inherently nurturing to the outside as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, it was funny. I, bef when I write, when I was getting interested in Ayurveda and I wasn't sure if I wanted to become certified in it, I went to an Ayurvedic practitioner thinking, okay, let me go check this out. You know, I had some, a few minor health issues at the time and a lot of overwhelm sort of and stress. My kids were young and <laughs> I went to her and basically what I came out with that after an hour was you need to give yourself time in the morning to yourself, which we'll talk about, and you need to talk to the trees. <laughs> and I left there thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> But she was absolutely right. You know, maybe she said it in a way that didn't resonate with me, but it was absolutely, you know, nature is so healing and so grounding. So yeah, yeah. that's what I do. I mean, every day, get outside. Even if you're just going in your backyard and putting your hand on a tree, 
you know. Right. Yeah, it's so powerful. Um, and I think, you know, being in quarantine, um, if you're in an, an area, I know that there are some countries who are so highly regulated that they're really not um, encouraged to even go outside. Um, although I do think that they can go outside for short periods of time, but um, uh, as much as you can safely be outside, I would definitely take advantage of it because it can be super, uh, super powerful and reducing mm -hmm. stress and feeling grounded. Um, so, so let's move on to the second thing that we, um, we learned that in, when in our Ayurveda training, we learned that the body responds really well to set routines. So in putting this into practice, um, what can be really grounding for the body is to have, you know, um, waking up at the same time every day, eating your meals at the same time every day, um, and going to bed at the same time every day. And, you know, sometimes that can be a little tricky. However, again, because many of us are in quarantine and we have, we're, we're not bound to uh, too much of the schedule. I know that people work from home and all that. Um, and the kids have school, but you know, for, for the most part, there's possibly more flexibility now um, where you can start to think about that and think about how powerful it can be to, um, to get your body on in, in a, a schedule because Ayurveda teaches that we are very much connected with the circadian rhythms and that even on a cellular level, um, there are certain functions of the cells and of the organs that, uh, you know, are designed to happen at certain types of certain times of the day. Um, so, you know, one thing to start with, and I'll just pass it over to Laura, um, would be mornings. So what do we, what should we do in mornings? Yes, I think it's so important to wake up if you have kids before your kids, if you're working from home before you check in with work or check your phone and give yourself time in the morning to prepare for your day. And mm -hmm. that could mean different things to different people, right? Some people want to wake up and get into a meditation right away, which is great. Um, some people, you know, want to wake up and we'll talk about this, maybe do 10 minutes of yoga. Um, you know, we talked about pranayama last week. Some people can do pranayama. Some people can just sit there with a, cup of tea and just plan your day like like okay what's going on today what do i need to get done today how do i want it to look um just taking and it can just be 10 minutes just taking that time for yourself getting into your day can really make you feel grounded and this was one of the most important things that i did for my health and wellness and overwhelm this kind of changed my life actually getting up before my kids planning my day. I like to meditate, but if you don't like to meditate, it's okay. You know, find something that sort of helps you get into your day on the right foot. And um, I also will sometimes add some affirmations to my morning, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're drinking your tea and you're planning your day or you're doing your breathing, maybe you add, and it can be anything. It can be something as simple as, you know, I am love mm -hmm. or um, today is a beautiful day. Uh, you know, sometimes some weeks I like to like think of three things that I kind of would like to work on for myself and put those into an affirmation. So for a little while there, I think I was, I was saying, you know, um, I am, I am brave. I am smart. I am worthy, you know, right. anything that you're working on. And then you can go back to that during the day and maybe write it on a post-it note. And so at lunch, if you're feeling down or sort of overwhelmed or life's gotten to you again, you can go back to your affirmation, take a few deep breaths, you know? So I, something in the morning by yourself for five to 10 minutes, I think is, is huge in feeling grounded and ready for your day. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. That is perfect. Um, great. So yeah, so um, just to recap, we have, uh, walking in nature or being in nature, even if you're sitting, 
um, is very grounding and getting a routine of your day is very grounding, um, especially that morning part is really, can be really key and powerful. And so then the third thing that um, is, can be really grounding is yoga. And so yoga, if you're someone's like, oh God, I don't really like yoga. <clears throat> um, there, you can do it different ways. There are so many different kinds of yoga. You don't need to have a yoga studio. There are millions probably um, of videos on YouTube and there are, um, you know, you can look up any length um, video that you want and you can do a moving flow or you can just keep it really simple and spend 10 minutes doing one or two grounding poses that can be really powerful. Um, so um, what, do, you, do you have a couple of poses in mind, Laura, that we could share? Um, yeah, so, um, you know, I'm not a yoga instructor, uh, so I don't wanna, I always check in with your doctor and make sure that you're okay, right, to be doing yoga, but so three of my favorite grounding poses are yeah. um, yeah. mountain pose, which is, you're, you're standing, <laughs> right? But you're feeling yep. sort of the, energy, the pull down into the earth and the pull up, you know, you're feeling your connection um, with nature and sort of your energetic connection. And um, tree pose, I really like this when you stand in one of your, um, you know, you can look this up, but the sole of your foot goes against your other leg. Um, and I love that because I also like, I think trees are very grounding. So again, you're pulling down and your arms can, be up here or here um and i also love shavasana mm -hmm. right laying on your back and very often i will do a shavasana at night before i go to bed five minutes just lay on my back, feel supported feel grounded let my day sort of trickle out of me mm -hmm. um but i also like i you know so since this quarantine and everything has closed I've gone back to doing online yoga. And like Laura said, you know, it can be 10 minutes of super gentle poses that just sort of open your body. They make space in your body. They open up your energy. It doesn't mean that you have to go and do an hour of power yoga. You know, some, right. Some people use yoga as an exercise, which is wonderful, but some people can just use it as a quick grounding tool as well. Exactly. So um, I like, I, Right now, I'm really liking Cole Chance on YouTube. Um, she has short videos and some longer ones. I don't think she has like hour long, but she has, you know, some longer ones. And I just, I think it's important to find a teacher that or a, an instructor that resonates with you. You like the way she or he cues. You like the way they're talking about yoga and the mind and nature, you know, so. Exactly. I, I think it's a really, really good grounding tool. And I don't want to scare people off for people like you said, who are like, oh, I don't like yoga. And it's like, you don't, a few grounding poses, you don't have to go into a flow. You don't have to, you know. Right. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And um, yeah, there's, if we can maybe post a couple of resources in the comments, um, but we, um, I would encourage, um, beyond that, if this is something you're interested in to, you know, look up the poses that we mentioned and find a video on how to do it um, safely. Most of the ones that we mentioned are quite safe, actually, but um, uh, yeah, it's always good to, to do that and get a, an actual teacher um, showing you how to do the pro pose properly. But, um, but yeah, you can even search in YouTube, you can even search grounding yoga <laughs> and you'll yep. get up about the teachers that you know have a grounding sequence yeah exactly it's a great like laura said it's a really great tool for grounding um that again you know you don't thank god right we don't need to go anywhere we can do free yoga from all these um amazing teachers uh right on youtube so um so yeah, I think that wraps it up for today. Um, let us know if you have any questions in the comments and we'll post a couple links below. And thanks for joining us. So yeah. we'll see you next time. Thank you. All right, bye everyone. Bye. bye.